RX-0 Unicorn Gundam. One of the most controversial Gundam designs in all of the Gundam lore. Simply because Bandai has really, really, really milked this model. It has milked this design. There's so many different versions of the Unicorn. The only other mobile suit that comes close is the red or blue frame from Gundam Seed. That's why it's met with such an opposition. Most people don't like this mobile suit, probably because they've seen it too much. Understandable. Others may dislike the mobile suit simply because of the very plain look. When it is in unicorn mode, it is a bone white. Not very striking for some. But after watching the anime countless times, especially when it came out back in 2010, waiting around six months in between each episode with bated breath hoping it would happen soon, I grew to love the Unicorn Gundam. Actually, I just love the series as a whole. This suit is piloted by Banaji Lynx. This suit is not for the faint of heart. In every sense of the word, this is pretty much a giant grenade, a giant hand grenade. Though beautiful to look at when completed, it is not a kit to be fiddled with at all, if I'm going to be blatantly honest with you. Also, the price is not for the faint of heart. The kit in itself is $209 currently, USD. I'm not the type of person to sit here and tell you what it cost in yen when you and I don't live in Japan. The added LED kit for this, if you go with the official Bandai version, is $120. The third party version, which houses far more LED choices and lighting, is around $40, which is a huge drop off and I hear it's just about as good. I haven't gotten my hands on one to confirm or deny this, but I'd imagine it can't be too far off from the Bandai offering. On top of that, this kit has about three modes, Unicorn Mode, New Type Destroyer Mode, and Unchained Mode. Each one of these modes requires you to fiddle with the kit. Now, if you have this as a pretty much raw build, you're not going to have any issues with it at all. But if you paint this kit, it will become the bane of your existence, especially if you make the foolhardy mistake that I did. Do not paint the entire inner frame of this kit at all costs. Just paint the parts that are exposed armor, not the entire thing. Any level of friction will make the transformation a pain in the ass. And could also lead to breaking parts when attempting to transform or put certain parts together. Even while putting the arms together, I actually cut the wiring in the forearm on the left arm of this kit. I had to take it apart and re-solder the parts back together. That's how big of a goof I made. The limited space for parts, even in the vanilla build, is kind of crazy. So when you add a few layers of paint, especially when it comes to me, it's definitely a few layers, you will be met with a lot of friction and resistance, making the kit harder to deal with. But undeniably, when built, it's nice. By the way, the ankles, they suck. Look at this. You tilt him back and he leans forward like Michael Jackson in the Smooth Criminal video. You really don't want this to fall over, especially after you painted it. It's actually quite annoying. I have nothing for this. You know, it's like, it's a $200 kit plus the lighting. It's a damn near $300 kit. Oh, and if you fiddle with the kit too much, the legs, look at this. The legs pop right out of the socket. I don't know how many times this has happened, but then I have to take the kit away and then force the legs back together. The ankles seem to not want to stay in place. The arms aren't strong enough to hold up the weapons, so dynamic poses, you know, it's going to give way over time, even with paint. I was going to do a lot of action poses with this kit on the action base, which you will probably need to hold it upright because this thing is prone to tipping over. As I said before, the joints in the ankles suck and the legs leave a lot to be desired. But for most people, if you have a glass display case, you can't really put the unicorn on its action base to hold it. So you're going to have to order in a special acrylic case and place it somewhere. It's like the only option or get a super big glass base. And at that point, you've got the money for this sort of stuff. So you don't really need me to tell you. Overall, the presentation of this kit is awesome. The double Gatling guns on the shield looks pretty legit when put together, dude, like for real. It is cool as hell to look at. It's sick. It really is. This thing is great for shelf candy, and that's all it's good for. I mean, you could pose it from time to time, but 
over time, I can tell that the joints will become weak and start to wear and get loose. And if you've put as much time and energy as I did into painting this, the last thing you want is it to tip over and be scratched or chip. And I can tell you from experience, transforming mobile suit and paint do not mix. I've learned the hard way with this unicorn kit because I have a lot of scratches and a lot of paint chips just trying to display this thing. I even did more damage to the kit just trying to do this review. And once I realized that the action base, which I also painted, didn't take kindly to being painted, so I couldn't get the base to maneuver up and down to accommodate for the fact that once Unicorn is in destroyer mode, it's much taller. So I couldn't even really use it for that because it was stuck in place and I didn't feel like fighting with the plastic. Because the one thing I've learned with these Gundam model kits is this. If you paint them and something gets stuck and you force it, there's a good shot you will break it. And getting replacement parts can take weeks from the official Bandai replacement part website. And one runner runs you about $18. So if you break multiple parts, that price tag goes up a bit. Right now I'm showing off the Beam Magnum, which actually is a very beautiful design for a mobile weapon. I kind of wish I put more time into painting it, but as always, I'm a guy who is uh, always on a very tight time schedule. So my free time to experiment with things is very, very limited. I also decided to give you a little extra shot of the Beam Gatlings. I made the mistake of using a chrome powder, which looks phenomenal. But once you clear coat the chrome powder, if not done correctly, the chrome will completely sort of vanish. Missed a spot in the inner thigh. That was terrible to realize. Another bone of contingent, the LED wire system. It sucks. It's a lot of extra work. The wires are easy to break if you're not careful. Like just putting the kit together and if something moves out of place and you force it, the wire will be just cut in two. You can hide the wires in the upper arms, even though the manual pretty much stresses you need to leave slack out, which can look tacky. But if you don't leave the slack out, you can't really move the unicorn's arms. And if the wires are too tight, this can lead to the connection breaking within the rubber hosing, and you really wouldn't know it until the LEDs weren't running again. I will apologize right now for not doing any closer shots on the bazooka, which is actually very cool, extremely large, and I didn't remember to do anything with the bazooka, sadly. Fast forwarding a bit, we're going to go into the destroyer mode. New type mode, uh, NTD mode, whatever you want to call it, Unchain. A very cool gimmick. Unfortunately, I couldn't show you in full because, as I stated before, I painted this kit, so obviously a lot of parts didn't want to move. It was an absolute struggle to deal with some of them, sadly which kills a lot of the cool factor. I couldn't even get the legs to work properly. Overall, this is what Bandai was focused on with this kit. I feel like everything else was secondary. Their first concern was how to make sure that the unicorn could light up. I believe the LEDs inside also include some black lights, which is kind of cool. And that's about all I can say. I mean, it's great to look at, but the downside is it runs on four AA batteries with a huge brick that holds them. And you're limited to only being able to use this while connected to the action base. The action base in and of itself, if you paint the unicorn, will scratch the unicorn up if you are not careful. Once again, I have to stress, this is a kit that once you build and paint it, will have to remain stationary. If you screw with it too much, if you fiddle with it, if you move it, if you try to pose it, you run the risk of scratching something because there are far too many moving parts gimmicks and I learned this the very hard way. My only gripe with the LED system is third party seems to offer it cheaper. And for some reason, there was no way to get some LEDs in the shield, which I thought was odd. It could have been cool if the LEDs would have worked with the beam sabers a little bit. Um, the two shoulder things that pop up right there, you see them, they're big, they're red, they're circular on the shoulder. I don't know what the hell they're called. Those things require you to use a special key to pull them out. Otherwise, it'll be a pain in the ass. Once again, pain in kit, right? Unfortunately, Fluffy chewed my key to bits. So I'll probably never be able to put this back in unicorn mode and then take it into destroyer mode without chipping or breaking something. I do like the cockpit a little bit. 
it's very cool that you can see directly inside. You can see Benaji in there. The black light that, you know, glows on the character looks pretty cool. The only problem I have with this is the fact that it's glowing red in there. And technically, in the anime, it never glue red. I don't think it glowed at all. It would have been cool if they, like, had, like, a blue shell casing in there or something. I don't know. Maybe I should have taken the time to paint the inside a different color to sort of negate all that red. But, really, uh, time constraints and it's a whole lot of your fawful. I would suggest you paint the pilot figure first. So that way, when you put it inside of the kit, you can just move on with your day. Because once you've painted this, there's no taking it apart again, ever. Really, there's no taking this apart. I mean, you can, but you run the risk of damaging the kit completely. Even without paint, there are just so many parts on this mobile suit that are so tight that you worry about breaking stuff. I'm sorry I didn't put this in on chain mode, but there are just so many parts in the legs that were stuck. I just couldn't really get them open. I mean, I could, but I wasn't going to push my luck. You know what I'm saying? Overall, this kit is, uh, it's beautiful. It is. Um, maybe it's the paint job. I decided to go with something that wasn't just bone white. I wanted to do some sort of kind of new Gundam feel where certain parts were an off gray or grayish white versus white. And I know some people said I should have, uh, gone an extra level of white to really bring out the contrast and colors. And I agree. That was the original game plan, but then, uh, I got tired of painting this. <laughs> I literally got physically ill after a few days of like trying to get this done in a timely fashion and still missing the deadline to get to work on Barbados. I wanted to give the edge of the beam rifle or beam magnum, I should say, a bit of a worn look like it was burnt in. It does look cool, but I think I lost the silver glow. Unfortunately, maybe instead of going for chrome, I should have gone with a candy based silver, which would have been a lot harder to hide, but it wouldn't have been as reflective. But, you know, live, learn. That's the whole point of Gunpla for me. I try new things and see what sticks and what doesn't. I guess I could say I recommend this kit to anyone who's interested in it. There's so much I missed here. I missed uh, a lot of the weapons features. I missed the fact that you can put a magazine on the back of the unicorn. And you can also put the rocket magazine on the back of the unicorn. There's just a lot of stuff here. Well, not that much. And also, I guess, you know, there are some things I do have an issue with. When I think about it, with as much as this kit is, what, two, three versions of this? Just a normal unicorn? White? There's the final battle version, isn't there? Isn't there another one? For like 7-Eleven or some crap. Then there's the P Bandai full armor unicorn that has the you know giant fuel tanks and extra bazookas and whatnot for another 200 bucks. I mean, really, Bandai definitely uh is milking the unicorn design harder than they're actually milking the Gundam Seed Ashtray frames, in my opinion. Frankly, I wouldn't mind seeing it end. As much as I enjoy this design, I feel it's flawed. But then again, this was Bandai's first attempt at putting LEDs in their suits. I hear that the Exia is actually a masterpiece. So I'll have to look into building one soon. Don't worry, I have one. It's just sitting in the back room, waiting for the day when I have time to do something with it. And I will say this about the model kit. It was actually nice enough that when I showed it to D-Girl, she seemed to really want one after that. So maybe that's something to say for the design as a whole. Oh well, that should do it for me. On a scale of 1 to 10, I guess I could give this a solid 7 or 8. Probably for shelf presence alone. When it comes to painters, I'd say that this is a great model kit to paint. There's plenty of room to do damn near anything you want, especially practicing on your hues and tones. And since there's all that white, there's tons of free wheel estate to experiment, especially if you have some idea of what you want to do. As a straight build, it just looks like a giant toy. So, yeah. That's why I prefer painting. I, I really can't stand these kits unpainted. And there's a lot of white areas you can make the mistake of missing because you don't assume that they're going to be revealed parts. When in actuality, there are some pieces of armor that are revealed. So this is probably a kit you want to build first, map out what you want to do, then take apart and repaint. But I'm not into that sort of thing. I like to paint, snap it together, and be done with it. Oh, well. Rate, comment, subscribe, because the more of you that do, YouTube's less likely to not promote this channel.
which is actually a money pit. <laughs> I remember someone accused me, oh, he just made the painting channel so he could make even more money. I'm like, there's absolutely no money in this. This costs money, dude. <laughs>